What's up, CP family? Welcome to another episode of the Complete Performance Audio Experience, a podcast where we share live clips of the sessions we do with our athletes. Have a listen. Enjoy. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, you know. Um, as athletes, we're never really taught how to perform. It's kind of crazy. We're just kind of expected to go out there and like know how to do something that's that's uh, incredibly challenging to do. And something nobody really told us for the longest time was that you don't really use your thinking mind to perform. And we use our thinking mind in order to train. Your thinking mind or your intellect, it's used to break things down. So you define things, you break them down, you define things, and you can compare and contrast things and you can decide which things are better and which things aren't good, which things are getting in the way, which things would be helpful, what would be effective, what would be not effective. And we use our intellect to do that. Um, but what happens is we don't know how to turn that part of our mind off. Or even worse, we use that part of our mind to try to play. And um, what we all ultimately need to do in order to perform is we need to be, our game needs to be built back up. Pretty much 100% of our training time is spent breaking things down analyzing, comparing and contrasting, and trying to find how you can be better or do better in order to achieve what you want to achieve. Um, but a lot of times what that does is that keeps us in our mind when we're out on the court, when we're out in, on, in a live competition, we're in our mind and we can feel that that is interfering with the process. Um, but the mind is a, is a challenging thing to quiet. That's why it's the first thing that we practice. It's the, it's the basis of confidence. Um, because in a way it's really the beginning and the end of the mental game. If on one end, <clears throat> our, we use our mind or our intellect in order to break things down and analyze things. If we're going to be quieting that part of our mind down, we're not going to be using that part of our mind so much. Like what does, what does our mind do? Like what, how does it, how does it function? If it's, if I'm not using my mind to try to, um, navigate the point and when, what am I doing with my mind? Well, if you can think about it, your mind is actually way more of a reception than it is a doing. We use our mind to perceive what's happening. And so as you open up your mind, you can do that by listening and everyone can just do that for a second. Just listen. As soon as you start listening, you stop thinking. Now try this, feel. As soon as you start feeling, you stop thinking. And then let's say I was going to ask you to sprint out of your chair when I snap my fingers. And if you sprinted, the moment I snap my fingers, I'm gonna give you a million dollars. That state where I know what I'm about to do, I'm about to get out of this chair and sprint. I know. That's a, that's a state of performance. That's not thinking. You can be in that knowing and you can not think. So you can listen, you can feel, you can know. And none of those things are thinking. All of those things are ways that we can come back into the moment. And I think the hardest thing about the state of performance that is to master is it's not instantaneous. It's not like a decision or an action. You can just go and boop, I'm in my zone. It doesn't work like that. Like you have to let the momentum from your thinking mind, which was trying to control things, you have to let the momentum of the thinking mind slow down. It's like your mind was a car that only has a gas pedal and you're driving it. Take your foot off the gas. It's going to take some time to slow down. It doesn't just instantaneously stop. And so I think that's one of the more challenging things to deal with is the fact that that even when we stop generating thought, you can actually have thoughts. Thoughts are still going to come through your mind because those patterns have momentum and certain stimulus outside of you. Um, things that are happening or things that you're feeling within you, they also stimulate thoughts. Um, so you don't want to make thoughts the enemy. Um, I want to be very clear about kind of what I'm saying here. It's more about, we don't want to enter the thinking mind. Like we're going to use that to perform. That's the thing that is interfering with our performance almost all the time. And so when we can learn to open that mind, which is really what mindset is about, that we begin the process of letting go of striving for where we're trying to go and we're re-establishing our mind-body connection by opening the mind we bring the mind back to the body from opening the mind i'm perceiving what's happening now i'm not thinking about what might happen or what did happen i'm perceiving what's happening now by opening my mind 
So mindset, we open the mind, we bring the mind back to the body. In meditation, we begin to put more of our mind into our body, into our action. It's like you're activating your body with your attention. You're no longer feeding the future and the past with your attention. You're feuding, fusing, uh, fueling your activity, your action, what you're literally doing. Now, that's quite a balance. It seems almost um, like they're like they're pulling in opposite directions. Am I supposed to be bringing my mind back to my body? Am I supposed to be putting more of my mind into my body? Those seem like they're going pulling in opposite directions. They are pulling in opposite directions. That's the balance. That's the match play balance. That unlocks a new experience. That unlocks your capacity to perform. You can hold that balance. I love how you said、uh, how the performance is 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 an effortless state, and to me, that's that's the biggest difference between training. Training is always effortful, and performance is a consequence of that. It's an effortless. It's like the it's like the the consequence of it, the expression of it, and everything like that. And so, as we're as we're progressing through the skills and 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 through the cycle and that kind of thing. We put effort into training our ability to be、um, quiet in the mind. We put effort into training our ability to maybe sense what it is to be a little bit more alert with our senses. But as we walk, as we progress, it we're we're trying to get to where that state of certainty, that state of confidence, is just a consequence. You're not effortlessly turning it on. It's just. You've gotten. It's just like if you practice your forehand enough, you can do it automatically on the court. You can do it automatically on the court. And if you practice like quieting the mind, you practice being alert. If you practice, you know, doing some swings with a tremendous amount of certainty, the confidence is just. It's 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 a it's a consequence. It's like the it's it's what's it's what's going to happen on the court. It's not something once you get to performance time. That you're gonna、um, turn on, and so I just wanted to point that out because that's sometimes, especially committed athletes, and everyone on this call is like super committed athlete. They get stuck in just trying to train, just trying to get better, get better. When we're trying to, we're trying to not try. We're trying to get to that state of effortless not trying, where those best performances flow out. And so everything in the portal is kind of orienting to that progression. While still training skills that 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 are going to be required to be able to have these kind of、um, skills in your at your disposal, so. You know, I get asked a lot. You know, the difference between, you know, practice play and match play, and if if everybody here, you know, you guys are high level athletes, and you ask yourself is. There's a difference, huh? I mean, it seems like there's a difference between practice play and match play. Even if I'm doing practice points or practice matches, it seems like there's a there's some kind of a difference. And what we're really doing here, guys, is we're just we're. I understand there's a difference, but we're closing the gap of that difference. We're closing the gap of that difference, and so you can take your practice play, and you can be, you know. You can be more engaged. You know what I mean. You can be. You can. You can be more connected. You can be more still. For example, you can be more、uh, alert. You can be more certain. You know, like these are like these are really huge words that kind of flow into the, the mental skill of confidence. And you can do that in practice. You can actually be more engaged. You can. Those words can come alive in practice. And what you're doing is you're closing the gap for when you step on the match court. Because when you step on the match court, I guarantee you'll be you, those those words are really really powerful, and you're going to start really wanting to strive. Or I, I don't even want to say strive. You really want to be that. Okay. So how do you be that? And that's what we're working on with these seven skills. And these seven skills, they all kind of feed in. It's, it's like these are streams that are feeding into like an ocean that's called present moment awareness. You know what I mean, and that's really what you want to do. You want to, even in your training, even in your in your in your training on the court and practice, you want to be more present. You want to be more connected. You want to be、um, more engaged.
Thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want information about how you can join us on these sessions, check us out, mindbodystroke.com. Talk soon. Peace. Love. Rejoice is a sort of dignified Elizabethan, but it says play. St. Thomas, aware of this, said that the divine wisdom was above all to be compared with games, because games are played for their own sake, not for any ulterior motive.